Uh, hello, thank you for giving me the floor. I'm Farva Sial, representing Civil Society Financing for Development and the European Network for Debt and Development. So I'm going to make two points. First, um, learning from history, and second, reality on the ground. Your Excellencies, uh, preemptive questions are often not really about finding new solutions, but more about distractions. I say this because the way the three questions have been framed for this work stream on private finance already assume that high private finance is the primary answer to development challenges in developing countries, that risk and reward to the public and private sector are somehow compatible, and finally, that valuable projects uh, will save developing countries. I'm afraid this prescriptive pill, which developing countries are being sold over and over again, is not based on the development experience of the global north. In fact, the private sector was an ancillary tool in the development agenda of the developing north. Public banks, investment in public infrastructure, strong welfareism, and a resounding ability to exercise sovereign power help them secure their national interest. We must look to their history for those answers. Based on the extraordinary efforts of public banks in responding to public needs during the COVID crisis, and here I mean developing countries, we have a very real precedent in what can be achieved if we empower public banks to finance public needs. Finally, on my second pound, uh, point on the reality on the ground, in the current era of monopoly capital, where regulation is no longer a tool of viable progress in the developing north, and this is a dispassionate fact, the answer is not to unleash more private finance in developing south. There is persistent empirical evidence showing that financial transfer from developing countries to developed is taking place year on year. The figure of what in 2012, if you minus the illicit flows, was 977 billion, and it has quadrupled in the context of the crisis. So this is a very real statistic, which is actually admitted in IMF's own evaluation reports. Public-private partnerships, blended finance, ESG bonds, greenwashing, pinkwashing, and an entire laundry list is not functional for development. We see no results, we see no evidence. So the cyclicality of never-ending debt service, extortionist surcharges and conditionality, and more financing continue to lock developing countries in a grand Ponzi scheme. These are not my words, they are, these are from UNCTAD. So in this context, once again, fixating on, on the financing gap is, is, is going, not going to solve the, the problem. It's not a gap of capital. No financing gap ever existed for the developed North, and it does not exist for the developed South as it is being framed in the way it is, because almost every dollar in private financing ends up extracting more money from the global South. Thanks a lot.